Hi everyone, today we are going to conduct experiments related to thermoelectricity. It's not a well-known phenomenon, but it's an easy way to create electricity with a difference of temperature. It's called the Seebeck effect. And reciprocally, we will be able to create a difference of temperature by using electricity. It's called the Peltier effect. We are going to show you the Seebeck effect through a basic experiment. Practically speaking, it works with metal couples. We will join two metals and bring that junction to a certain temperature. Then, put a second identical junction to a different temperature. It's very simple, but it should create electricity. It should be pointed out that each metal has its own Seebeck coefficient and that the aluminium-iron couple is by far the most efficient one regarding common metals. We have lifted one of the junctions so we can heat it up with a flame. Meanwhile, the other is going to stay at room temperature. Ok, it hardly produces 3 mV for a 20 microamps current only, but at least we've observed the effect we were looking for. You can always have a little bit more by using a couple of junctions in series. They are placed alternately at hot and cool sources. But the production stays at about 10 mV tops, making the power ridiculously low. Fortunately, we can do much better than that thanks to manufactured goods which gather many junctions with specific metals. They are called Peltier modules. They can almost only be found in car electric coolers. They are used to produce coal from an electric current. But, of course, they are reversible. We bought a few of those on eBay for about $13. Let's see together what happens. I put my hand on one side of the Peltier module. The other one stays cold as it's pressed against the stone. We can already observe that more than 0.1 volt is produced with that temperature difference. We even managed to run a tiny motor with 4 modules in series. Now, let's see what happened with the flame. The heat flow moving from the hot side to the cold one make it work. The moment we stop heating the module, the produce voltage decreases. We just saw that there needs to be some heat transferred from one side to another to produce something. But after a while, the cold side becomes practically as warm as the hot one. From there, the production doesn't get any higher. We can clearly see that the voltage reaches the maximum point before decreasing gradually. To remedy the situation, we're gonna use a big computer cooler which would prevent the cold side from warming up. But, as the radiator ended up getting hot himself, we've added a little fan. We are also going to use a little radiator on the hot side, so that the flame's heat equally spreads on all the junctions. It may look insignificant, but it considerably increases the performances and prevents that kind of things from happening. Blah. Contrary to one might think, to produce as much voltage as possible with a single flame, it's better to use a single Pelty module, which can easily be heated at a very high temperature. If you put several modules, the power spreads, the temperature of each module decreases and it produces less. It's a consequence of the second law of thermodynamics. You can easily build a burner with no more than alcohol and a shoelace. We have everything we need now to make it work. Let's see how it goes.
Let's go a little further and see what we can get from the sun's power. To do that, we cover the side to be heated in black and put a radiator on the other side to dissipate heat. Some thermal paste to join the two sides and we are ready to go for the outside test. In order to concentrate the rays of the sun on the module, we use a parabolic mirror. We can see that we produce enough power to supply an electric motor. It works, but solar cells are far from being a poor second to pelting modules. Indeed, in our conditions, a solar panel of the same size produces 18 times more than a Peltier module. Now we are going to conduct some experiments concerning the Peltier effect. We are going to send some electric current into a module. We are then going to use a digital thermometer. By the way, most top-of-the-range thermometers work with metal couples. We talk about thermocouples. The more the junction warms up, the more voltage is produced. It's precisely the Seebeck effect we talked about at the beginning of the video, which is involved here to measure temperature. Depending on the current direction, one of the sides should heat up and the other should cool down. We also put the hot side on a radiator, which allows the cold side to be even colder. It works, the temperature gradually decreases and reaches its limit around 4 degrees Celsius. In fact, that limit corresponds with the moment when the heat constantly transferred from the cold side to the hot side is caught up by the heat going, through conduction, from the hot side to the cold one. It feels weird, it's the only electric component that can cool down. It's interesting to know that this Peltier module's efficiency is very poor we measure that the one we use gets only near 1% efficiency. To give you an illustration, for 100 joules heat going through the module, we would be able to get no more than a single joule of electricity. In concrete terms, power-wise, to recharge a phone battery you need at least 2.5 watts. You will need then a 250 watts flame to recharge it with that system. Generally speaking, getting a good efficiency to convert heat in another energy is always going to be complicated. We have the same problem with heat engines, like the Stirling engine, which can be compared to Peltier modules, as we heat it up on one side and cool it down on the other. Even an idealized heat engine couldn't convert all the heat going through him, it must necessarily release heat to a cold source, unless it's submitted to an infinite temperature, which is impossible. Still, heat engines are way more profitable than Peltier modules, as their efficiency can reach 40% in cars and sometimes more in power plants, but they are not directly producing electricity from heat.